Hi there. Today I'm talking to you about Twitter. Of course, Twitter's not the only microblogging platform that's ever existed. Vine and Tumblr are still around, but Posterous is now out of action, Daily Booth has gone, and Friendfeed has closed up shop due to a declining number of users. No doubt new microblogging platforms will arise in the fullness of time, and while we don't know how long Twitter will retain its dominance, it has demonstrated some remarkable staying power. So, Twitter. What reaction does hearing that word evoke when I mention it to a group of people? Well, it's always happiness. Sorry, that's a little ambiguous. That photo is actually called happy on Flickr. There, that's better. This is how people always respond to using Twitter. Well, not always, and you kind of know that. One of the first questions I often ask when I talk to a group of people about social media is, who hates Twitter? And the vast majority of the time, I get way more than half the people in the room putting their hands up. My second question is then, who's never used Twitter? And it's often those same people that said they hated Twitter who put their hands up again. I was in the same boat before I started to use Twitter. About four years ago, I thought I knew what Twitter was, and I didn't like it. And then I started to use it. And without exception, all those people I've seen who get online, give it a go, use Twitter effectively and strategically, always stop hating Twitter. It doesn't have to be your favourite, but you can see the value in it. And what I wanted to talk about here in this video is not so much how to use Twitter, but I wanted to share a few stories to show exactly what kind of value it can have. The first point I'd make is that Twitter is an increasingly professional network. It seems to me that the faded prompt question in the box for composing new tweets, which asks what's happening, as if you just need to say what you're doing at the moment, is somewhat deceptive and should arguably be faded out completely, because that's not how people generally use Twitter. So much of my emphasis about using social media practically, actively and in an engaged way is about getting exposure and being visible. And Twitter can give that to you. Just a few days before making this video, I sent out this tweet to encourage students to share their About Me profiles. It took a few moments for me to think of doing this. It took even less time for me to actually do it. And without me planning this, without me thinking it might happen, and even without me hoping it might happen, the About Me people saw my tweet, looked me up, and decided to give me a little bit more exposure. This is what can happen just with a few seconds of effort. Twitter exposes you to real-world media industries, organisations and individuals. And just to give another example of that, when I was first making teaching videos, I made a video about cultural representation, and I looked at how ideologies can be problematically conveyed through different texts. As part of this, I put together what was essentially a 10-minute review of a board game, and this board game displayed some fairly sexist stereotypes in its components. And a student responded to my video by asking me on Twitter whether or not there were also racial stereotypes in the board game. And I replied, absolutely, and I sent out this picture to back that up. And what was remarkable about this is that the designer or the designers of this board game saw my tweet, and they saw the video, and they replied. And when I tell this story, people often cringe and think, whew, trouble. But I have a different reaction. I actually think this exemplifies one of the fantastic things about Twitter. I get to interact with, and maybe even have a small impact on, real-world industries. Sure, this could have flared up into some aggressive tweets being sent back and forth, but I'd put forward a compelling case, and I wasn't attacking them personally. So I sent this reply. And the designer of this game liked my tweet and followed me, and I followed them back. And this is just one example of the great networking potential that Twitter has. That kind of communication in different parts of the world, in very different industries, just wouldn't have been possible in the past. In terms of teaching and learning, Twitter is a much better forum for students to communicate and share with their teachers, and more importantly their peers, than the kinds of enclosed forums on institutional servers that aren't accessed all that regularly. When used effectively, Twitter gets students interacting and building a presence of persona in the public realm, something that stays with you long after graduation. You can also contribute to the development of unit content as much as it's simply handed to you, and I think that's really important in the context of studying digital media. You may see a news story, for example, that's connected to your weekly topic that your tutor is not even aware of, and Twitter allows you to share that link with everyone. And if you don't want to just take my word for it, here's the perspective of a past student. 
Could you please tell us your name and what degree you're in? Uh, my name's Elizabeth. I'm doing media communication, but majoring in journalism, and I'm in third year now. Great. And did you start to use Twitter at the beginning of this unit? Is that new to you? Um, actually, because of the unit, I was I had to make a Twitter account, but then I had an opportunity regarding journalism because of the class where I had to live tweet a whole event. Um, it was a what was it? It's EECV. It's like a multiculturalism in um, like politics and stuff like that. And they got a bunch of students that were active in the media and we basically just liked to at the event. We got a free meal out of it, it was really awesome, I got exposure and a really good um, preference letter as well so yeah, I think that's the best thing to come out of the unit. Fantastic, great. So you hadn't used Twitter before the unit at all? No, Did no, you have no. a, a certain perspective on it? Did you yeah. sort of, yeah, what was it? Definitely, um, because I have a lot of younger friends who use Tumblr and they have, they put like photos of Twitter on it and there's like really kind of risque things that people write, you know, really blatant, um, polarised opinions and I thought that's what Twitter was. So when I, when I had it at the start of the unit, um, I just followed a bunch of journalists and stuff but then eventually I got the um, random people who just like say whatever they want on any issue and it turned out that they were just a loud minority all in all. Um, and yeah, and it completely just got rid of that vision that I had of Twitter. That it was just people with loud opinions. <laughs> Fantastic. So it's becoming more and more of a professional kind of networking medium. It's great to hear that it's been working for you. Oh yeah, definitely. When John Safran retweeted me once, I like freaked out. <laughs> was I, so cool. I've never had him retweet me. I'm very <laughs> disappointed now. Now I don't want to spend a lot of time here giving you advice about how to use Twitter. You learn by doing. And when I first started using Twitter, I remember I sent out several tweets without knowing what hashtags were. But I observed those around me, and I figured it out just by playing around and by making. To give you a few general tips though, either your Twitter handle, which is your username, or the full name you use on your bio, or maybe even both these things, should identify you, unless you have a very good reason for it not to. You want people to know who you are. And on that note, make sure you also use a profile picture. This should ideally be consistent with the main profile picture you use on other social media platforms. But if you really don't want it to, it doesn't have to be a picture of you. The main thing I would say is, don't have no picture there, because it looks like it's a blank profile. In terms of a written bio, make sure you have one. You can't write very much, Twitter doesn't let you, but not having one there kind of implies there's nothing worth telling. I can't tell you what to tweet, but never think you have nothing to say. Twitter is all about keeping a balance. There are some accounts that just retweet other tweets, and to be honest, they don't get a huge number of followers. Retweeting is good. Quoting is good. Talking and conversing is good. Self-promoting is good. But all of these things must be kept in balance. Most importantly, be active. Work out what the conventions of Twitter are, and just as importantly, how they're being used in different ways. To take hashtags, for instance, these are used at different times for joining a wider conversation, signalling the main theme of a tweet, enhancing the searchability of a post, or even just displaying humour. On your profile, note the difference between the tweets list and the tweets and replies list, which wasn't there when Twitter started. Try to work out why people often put a full stop at the start of some tweets. I wouldn't suggest doing this all the time, but every now and then it can be handy. And don't forget, you learn by doing. It's the only way. Oh, and one more thing. Do you know what the number one teaching tool according to the highly regarded Centre for Learning and Performance Technologies in the UK is? It's Twitter. Case closed. Welcome to the real world. <laughs>